Hey everyone, my name is Cody Pointer and I am the children's ministry team leader here at Westwood United Methodist Church. And I've never had the chance to do this, but I would love to say welcome to Westwood at One. It's officially my first Westwood at One. Um, and in part of that, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for welcoming in uh, me into this community um, to grow um, to learn, to challenge, and to walk along this journey with you all. I've really felt a lot of love, um, a lot of care, and I really appreciate everything that sort of has been thrown my way so far since being here at Westwood. It's really been enjoyable and wonderful, and I'm super excited for the future to come. Um, but alongside that, I want to let you guys into my life a little bit, share a little bit, and show you guys what I've sort of been looking at, learning. Um, and so for me, I want to start um, with a story from uh, my childhood, uh, which is super fun. Um, I always ran around. I was always on a bike, um, riding back and forth, doing different things. Um, I was that kid who was literally gone from sun up to sundown, which I know many of us grew up in that. I promise you, there are still kids that live that life. So don't worry, that life is still around. Um, and one of my favorite things is we had this little spot in town called the Trestle. And it was this old train bridge that was collapsed. And we'd go up there and we'd sit and we'd enjoy just wonderfully tart summer mulberries that had grown in right when they're ripe, right at the end of summer. Uh, it was the best. It was such a good time to be able to, after riding your bike all the way around town, go to this one park in town and sit and chill and just take like a good hour to just eat these free mulberries and, you know, take a break. And it's funny because in my personal study, I come across a really similar story to that um, in the book of Matthew. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. And I hear that and think about it. And it's shocking. Like, it's such an innocent moment that is happening with Jesus and the disciples just like with me and my friends hanging out and eating those mulberries and to think that somebody would approach what I imagine to be a super restful wholesome time and be so accusatory of it that it's ruining the Sabbath as they say um, it's not though we see that more in the story here he answered, Jesus, that is, haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priest. Or haven't you read in the law that the priest on the Sabbath duty in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and yet are innocent? And he's referencing that those priests in the temple still have to work on the day of Sabbath, you know, things like lighting fires, um, setting up for some sort of ritual sacrifices, um, normal temple work, which is work. So it would violate the Sabbath if it's being done on the Sabbath. I tell you that something is greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy not sacrifice. I think that statement is huge. It's funny. The chapter right before this in Matthew 11 ends with this. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And I think of that, which is funny that it comes right before this passage about Jesus and the disciples 
moving through this field, just minding their own business. They're taking these hands of these heads of grain, and just eating them and pulling them off. And I just want to say, get some rest today. Don't allow people to suppress your rest. Don't allow people to intervene upon it. There's much work to be done. And if you're not restful, you're going to be burnt out for that work to come. The work's going to come no matter what. So I think it's important for us to take that little phrase. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Because I know I want to sacrifice, right? I want to sacrifice a lot. And I push myself a lot. But if I don't maintain a healthy balance of work and rest, I won't be ready for the rest of the work to come. I'll be burnt out and done for. I'm not going to burden myself with those ridiculous rules and regulations that would prevent you from pulling mulberries off a bush or pulling the heads of grain off of wheat. Like, I'm going to accept rest as it is. I'm going to find the things that I find pleasure in to get rest. Maybe it's crafting, napping. Maybe it's playing a game, building something. Maybe doing puzzles. Whatever it is, you need to find rest. Pulling mulberries off a tree bush. Find that thing. And do it. And don't be held down by the burden of rules, um, regulations. Take the mercy of God that he created since the beginning in nature, that he worked for six days and rested on that seventh one. Let that be your lesson. God doesn't need rest, and yet he found time to make it. Let's find rest and... Let's make it. Let's desire mercy for ourselves, not sacrifice for ourselves. We are called to sacrifice. But there's a unique sort of balance where we need to also be merciful to ourselves. Thank you all for listening to me. If you will, pray with me. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for your son. Lord, I pray that all of us listening can find that rest that we desire. That we know that you're up there and you're in charge. And when we take a break, it'll, it'll be you in charge. And that we can lower our pride and our humility and we can allow you to take charge so we can take a break. That we can find rest and we can be ready for the work that's to come. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, I'm so excited for the future to come. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye.